You got to take the time to learn how to work your body. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode eight of the squad room. Today's guest is Dr. Eric Goodman. Eric is a chiropractor and he's a creator of foundations. And if some of you uh, go to yoga or you go to a CrossFit gym that does foundations, you might be familiar with it. But it's a pretty intense program that's excellent for strengthening the posterior chain in the lower back. Uh, Dr. Goodman uh, has a lot of information to provide and he's uh, super and uh, very pro law enforcement. And he was um, enthusiastic to come on this podcast and help share his tips and his goal and his desire that we all have healthy backs and we all have healthy lives. So much of what we do uh, comes from our back and obviously with the, the weight we carry on our belts and in our vests, um, our backs are certainly susceptible to that damage. And I don't know about your department, but my, my department, if you have a back injury after five years on the job, it's presumptive. In, it's a presumptive injury uh, as being work-related. So even even uh, county risk management or uh, city risk management acknowledges that our backs tend to be prone to going out and getting blown out. Uh, I don't know how many uh, partners I have with fusions or fused discs or back problems or herniated discs or et cetera. It goes on and on and on. And foundations training, I think, can really help improve a lot of that. Uh, I describe it in the show as like uh, a very intense version of, of yoga. And it's kind of like that. But we have videos up on our, our uh, website, thesquadroom.net, and we link to all of Dr. Goodman's uh, material. Anything we talk about in the show will be found on the show notes at thesquadroom.net. Uh, his uh, basic uh, information, he's got a book out called Foundations uh, that you can uh, purchase through Amazon on our site. Uh, full disclosure, we're an Amazon affiliate. So if you purchase anything on Amazon through our site, we get a tiny emphasis on tiny little uh, uh, kickback to help uh, support the show. But uh, we post those things up there not to get the kickback, but to uh, help you find the resources that might help you get healthy. And today is definitely one of those uh, episodes. Today we talk about the importance of uh, pre and post work stretching and the routine that he would recommend that all officers do when you're getting into and out of your uniform, uh, the importance or the relationship uh, between your back pain and low-grade inflammation, why he chose to go gluten-free, um, and uh, interestingly, the importance of gut bacteria and how the, the bacteria in your gut, and that's a good thing, the bacteria in your gut, the probiotics in your gut relate to your back strength and your back health. Uh, we talk about the, your diet's effects on your pain and uh, his opinion on the ice or not to ice debate that's currently seems to be going on. And uh, we also have uh, an interesting discussion about why you might be in a codependent relationship with your physician. Uh, that's an interesting topic. Also, what his suggestions are on vitamin supplements and, again, the probiotics and a couple other resources that he points to to help us get better. And that's always a good thing, right? So here we are with Dr. Goodman. Dr. Goodman, thank you for joining me uh, here on The Squad Room. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, this is a, this is a treat. Uh, you are... Uh, the author of a book that's on my bookshelf at home, and it's called Foundation, Redefine Your Core, Conquer Back Pain, and Move with Confidence. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that title should probably trigger a lot of bells in, in the listeners' heads of, of this podcast uh, with the first responders and particularly the law enforcement officers that listen because we deal with this back pain problem all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you would, give a little bit of your background, uh, how you came up with the uh, this program and why because there's an interesting story that is a personal develop a personal reason why you came up with this and how uh how you came to develop this uh training you call foundations sure my pleasure <clears throat> well uh, my my trade is i'm a chiropractor i i was educated as a chiropractic physician and learned a lot about the body at that stage but w what was going on personally in my own life uh, during the time that I was becoming a chiropractor was, was very stressful, very frustrating. My back just started to go. And I was, you know, 23, 24, 25 going through school, but all through college it had been starting to go too. In fact, it was like right around when I was 19, 20 years old, my back just stopped working very well. And I was a big guy. I was very strong. I was a college athlete. I was a high school athlete. I was playing water polo, played ice hockey for like over a decade. I really did a lot of sports and I weightlifted all the time. By any sense of the word, I was strong. 
But what was going on underneath the surface, you know, what, what was happening at my lower spine was really starting to come to the surface. 19, 20, 21, my back would go out like once every six months. It wasn't even that bad. I would like, I'd take, you know, four to six Advil over the course of a day for a few days and then I'd be okay. Then 22, 23, 24, my back starts going out every two to three months and much more severely. If I was trying to lift something up, I couldn't, even light things. If I was trying to sit in class all day to learn about how to fix the body, you know, <laughs> I'm in school to fix backs and to fix the spine and mine's just going. So it became super frustrating and it would just get progressively worse. All of a sudden it was 24, 25, 26 years old. My back wasn't going out. It was out. It was either a little bit painful or a lot painful, one or the other. And I was getting really frustrated with chiropractic school at the time. I was pissed. Uh, why can't I fix myself? How am I possibly going to fix other people? And how am I going to look them in the face and say, you got to come to me. I'm going to help you. What happened was my back wasn't strong enough to maintain itself. After sitting for so many years, after kind of getting a lot of strength training into my regimen, after being a 230 pound guy for long enough, my body started to break down. My back was first. It was too weak. Every time I would get an adjustment, the thing that was supposed to fix me, my back muscles were too weak for it to stay. It wouldn't maintain alignment. It would go right back out because there was nothing to stabilize it. So after being told that I was meant to get a fusion surgery at my lower spine, L5, S1, L4, L5, the last two discs and segments at the base of the spine, it's just like, you're out of your mind. No, no way, doc. And I got a second opinion in the, from an osteopath who is a typically a less conservative uh, physician. They're, they're going to really look at other options for care. Same thing. Dude, you got to get surgery. This, you're, you're 26 years old. Your back's only going to get worse. You have any idea how many times I heard that statement? Even from chiropractors and physical therapists and friends of mine that I used to train with and stuff. Like, Dude, your back's just going to get worse. It's just going to keep hurting you. All right. No way in hell am I becoming a doctor so that I can tell people that their back is just going to get worse. Not going to happen. I got to fix myself. And it took a long time. But this foundation training program came from fixing my spine, from finding the weak points over and over and over again and strengthening them until the point happened where about two years into it, I was strong, but very differently strong than I was in college and graduate school. I used to be able to bench press several, you know, three, 400 pounds. I used to be able to squat, same, deadlift, same. I don't do that stuff anymore. I'm stronger than I used to be as a result, more flexible and a lighter body weight. I learned how to play with the physics and the pulley system within the human body a little bit better. When the front of the body is pulling a little too hard, things like foundation training make the back of the body pull a little bit stronger, kind of balance out the system a little bit. So it does come from my own pain. You know, that's what the root of this work is. I still use it every single day, every single day. I'm like the hair cub the hair club guy, you know, <laughs> not just a, not just the president, also a client. And it's the truth. I, this stuff gets better because I use it every day and I work hard to get stronger. And a couple of years in, you've got some, um, pretty high profile fans too. Yeah. We're getting out there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we are, we have, we started our instructor certification program about two and a half years ago. And around that time, I think foundation training was starting to get a bit more of a following now we're into the hundreds of thousands, uh, and, and that's a direct result of some of the people that started using it. Yeah. Athletes, actors, directors, writers, the people we all hear about, pretty wild. And all of a sudden, I was getting calls from some pretty interesting folks. And as it turns out, it doesn't matter who you are. Your back might hurt. Yes. Your hips might hurt. Your knees might hurt. You might be nursing a hip injury that you've tried two different surgeries for, and you have to go make a movie that you're a superhero for. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out how to do that. Or you got to go play in the NBA championships or you got to go win a surfing event. But your problem, you, you got a back pain. You got not. And let me take that back. You don't have a back pain. You got a screwed up back and it's hurting you and it's debilitating you. And it's giving you a legitimate handicap mm -hmm. from doing what you want to do. So these people come to me and not just me anymore, but our instructors and they use our free videos. They use our DVDs, all kinds of stuff. And they get better just like I did, just like a lot of others do. They get themselves better. They start to strengthen the weak points that are so common among all of us. And 
Yeah. Uh, most people know the people we've worked with and that have fallen into foundation training as their best response to staying healthy and maintaining a, a reasonably pain-free life. So because this isn't a uh, video podcast, obviously, mm -hmm. it's only an audio podcast, what would be a one or two sentence description of what the foundation's training is? Okay. So, or what, how can someone visualize it in their mind as they're sure. commuting to work right now? Listen to this. I want you to, or if you're commuting to work, if you're sitting in your car, if you're sitting on a subway, something like that, I want you just to pay attention to your position. It's going to feel like your shoulders are being pulled down by the center of your chest. And like your head is just kind of drooping forward. Like you're looking a little bit too closely at a computer screen. And what I want you to do is do the exact opposite of that. Lift your head as high as you can, pull your chin back, almost like if you were to talk, you would kind of talk like this because you're pulling your chin back hard enough. It's going to act to lift the center of your chest up. And I just want you to sit as tall as you can or stand. If you're standing, stand as tall as you can. Bring your feet towards each other instead of away from each other in that strange little external hip rotation that we all get used to. And literally pull yourself longer and together. Stand taller. Make your torso broader and stronger. Make your hips tighter, more protected. That's what foundation training does. And I have a little uh, personal experience with it, just a little bit, um, uh, at my gym. Uh, mm -hmm. You know Traver and Eric, and Traver's uh, a frequent guest on this show, So, cool. uh, and Eric has been too. So uh, if anyone's subscribed to the show, they know who I'm talking about when I say Traver, Traver and, uh, and Eric. Um, they really were emphasizing this a lot when I came to their gym to start training. And I, I mentioned real briefly before we started uh, recording that I was coming off of a back injury, which I've talked about here before. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I have a lot of similarities to you because in my early 20s, I was already dealing with back spasms. And mm -hmm. um, back before I was in law enforcement, I was working in private enterprise, laying on the floor of my office because uh, my back was out and I couldn't move <laughs> and at 24, 25. Um, so I was, yeah. I, you know, some cumulative issues coming in. So I came into CrossFit and they would do a lot of these, uh, like the founder and some of your basic stuff as a warm up. And my version of how to describe it to people would be, um, some combination. It looks like yoga, but it's not. And it's really tough <laughs> in a good way. I mean yeah. that in a good way. It is not, it's no joke. Um, no it joke. is strenuous. And you will, uh, you'll feel muscles. You, you don't really ever work. Mm -hmm. And what I realized doing a lot of that, and then that's what caused me to go out and get your book and watch mm -hmm. your videos and try and work on some of these things on my own time, um, was, uh, there's yeah, the posterior chain, mm -hmm. um, in the back and you focus a lot on that. And, and the, the prescription I've gotten in the past has always been, um, you know, all in the front and the abs. And obviously I've got weak ab muscles and many of us do, but that was always where my physical therapist, uh, or my doctor would, would direct me. It was to those ab muscles. Mm -hmm. And this is much different. This is pulling that back into, into that back, which makes sense. If your back hurts, you're fixing your back. Yes. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, it's pretty wild how it's, you get everything. Let me give you a little explanation of what's going on in there. So the first thing we got to realize is the description of the core of the body, as most people consider it, is terrible for the spine. If you think of the front of your body, especially the abdomen or even the obliques as the core, you're going to constantly be shortening your spine in an effort to strengthen your body. We have to think of the core of the body differently. It's the pelvis. The structure of the pelvis is the center of our body. Therefore, any muscle that directly connects to that central structure, the pelvis, is a core muscle. And there's a lot of them below the pelvis. Mm -hmm. The strongest ones, the most impactful ones are not along the spine. They're below it. They protect it. Mm -hmm. They give the pelvis a stable base for the spine to lift and move away from. Mm -hmm. So even when I have people that get surgeries and different things like that, and I do send people to surgery, I've sent many patients to surgery when they need it, but I've never sent somebody to back surgery. I've only sent them to hip surgery. The hips need to move well for the back to work well. The problem with most people's spine is a response to their hips. The core of the body, the real core, the pelvis, the structures around the pelvis, they're too weak. They're sat on too often. They're not being used for what they need to be used for. They're literally being sat on and suffocated. So we have to strengthen those muscles below the pelvis to better support the muscles above it. That's where foundation training becomes 
a real legitimate go-to, wow, I can't believe how challenging this is, but also I can't believe how good I feel after it. Sure. That segues perfectly to my next question because I, I was going to describe, um, you know, this, our audience is primarily cops and corrections officers, mm-hmm. uh, but even the firemen and, and EMS mm-hmm. personnel that, so I go to work and I have 33 pounds of gear cinched down mm-hmm. on right here on my waist, right there on my hip bones. Right. And it's tight. It has to be tight. Otherwise it moves around. And then that kind of defeats the purpose of mm-hmm. having those tools on my belt. Um, and then, of course, I, ma- I imagine that the eight-inch boots that I'm wearing too are j- you're cringing as I describe this because you know what's coming. Jeez. This this load that my mm-hmm. my body is kind of um, having to deal with, right? So, I recently threw my back out, and um, it's funny that you're saying all those things because that's exactly what I finally was able to determine from um, my physical therapist was that uh, I was loading very tight hamstrings. And overdeveloped quads because I was in extension Mm -hmm. from the belt and my back had nowhere to go but to spasm. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are some of the things you could, you would tell or suspect that wearing that gun belt cinched down on you? What, what might be kind of a redundant question, but what are the, what are some of the problems that are going to come from that? Well, it's actually a little different. Um, Most of the problems we see at the pelvis are from pressure up from the bottom, sitting on it. You're sitting on your butt. So the pressure comes from below. Mm -hmm. We can get a very unique compressive pressure from that belt that you're talking about, though. So where my injury is, that L5-S1, it's the junction. It's kind of the combination or the dovetailing of the spine into the pelvis. The pelvis and spine need to move together. When you reach forward to get something, your butt, your pelvis needs to pull back behind you to counterbalance. When you've got that belt on and it's sitting at it's it's sitting at your hips, but it's actually sitting at your L4, L5 lumbar vertebra, your lower back. It's going to dictate how your body moves. So you guys have to train your body with those belts on, with additional weight even, on how to properly hinge. You have to learn how to get the hip joints to pull with a long spine instead of that kind of what's like a kink that happens at that lower lumbar spine in a lot of cops, firefighters, military people, people that have to have additional baggage. I mean, backpackers, you know, Mm -hmm. additional weight above the hips has to be held. Well, don't worry so much about the position of the weight. Worry more about training your body with that weight on to hinge properly, to keep the weight through the posterior chain. So you want to look at those videos that I have. Go to YouTube. It's free. Go. You, if you, you learn this for free and you never pay a dollar, I don't care. I want you to learn this. You have to. It's good for you. Go to YouTube. Learn how to do the founder. Learn how to do prone decompression. Strengthen the backside of your body to the point in which an additional 30-pound downward force is accepted instead of like kind of almost like rebelled against because that's what's happening. When you go to move, your body's like, I can't take this. Mm-hmm. So it's moving incorrectly. You got to teach your body to move well. It's not about where the weight is. It's about how you use it and how your body supports it. Interesting. So don't worry. Yeah. Like everybody's going to tell you to go weightlifting. Lift the weight you need to weight to lift and get better at lifting that weight with your whole body, not with your arms, not with like squats, just mm-hmm. human movement, which is a basic hip hinge that uses and loads the back of the body, the hamstrings, the glute muscles, the lower back muscles, the calf muscles. They're protecting. They're really, really protecting the spine if they're used correctly. Would the advanced move for that be eventually using a weight vest then? As you say, additional oh, you could. weight? Yeah, you could. I mean, you could, even really do things like, you could even do things like deadlifting and things from a slightly higher plane than just on the ground. Okay. Just teaching that back, and again, with the belt, but done well. Before you even put the belt on, learn that founder position. The founder is our kind of our, our namesake exercise in foundation training. Mm-hmm. And what it teaches is to use the posterior chain to absorb any weight that is pushing down on your body, including your own body weight. As you get better and better at that, that weight, that 33 or 35 pound uh, belt that you guys are wearing or a mm-hmm. vest that you're wearing, whatever, it's going to feel much more a part of you than a hindrance to you. And since there's only one doctor in the room, it's not me. Can you explain to people the posterior chain and what you're talking, sure. what we're talking about when you say that? Yeah. All right. So the, the backside of your body, posterior just means back super easy. And basically the posterior chain is the larger muscles along the backside of your body. There's more in there. There's really, really like specific stuff we can talk about, but what you need to understand is number one, the hamstrings and the glute muscles, 
they lift your torso when they're working well. If they're not working well, they stay really tight and really shortened. It's like your pelvis is tucked under you. That position that we kind of see a lot of people looking uncomfortable in. We got to make sure that those parts of the posterior chain stay strong. But literally, if you want to think of the posterior chain, just what it is, it's from the back of your head to the base of your heels along the back side of your body. It's the muscles that basically respond to movement and they're designed to propel you through life. They are literally like your endurance muscles. And somehow, some way in the past like 100, 150 years, we've come through all of these amazing technological advances that have literally made our bodies not use the posterior chain as much. We sit so often that we're neurologically telling our body that it's more important to rest on these muscles than to use them to lift our body weight. That's the literal, just simple patterning of neurology. Mm -hmm. We sit more than we move. Our body gets used to sitting. And we're a, we're a group that knows a lot about sitting too. And I mean, we sit in a patrol car yeah. and we drive around or we sit and we write reports. And in between that, we have to hop out of the car and chase somebody or jump over a fence. And, you know, there's no warm ups. There's no, there's no five minute warning before the bell. Yeah. It's just kind of a go. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that we might be able to do on a daily basis? You know, is there like a warm up coming into work or uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, something yeah, like, yeah. you know, something we can do just in the locker room that we can real quickly, what should we be focusing on? And, you know, it's going to sound redundant, but I'm going to point you right back to that YouTube page. Cause this is, you know, my, my job is to teach people how to move. That's what I do for a living. It's what I constantly do for myself to myself always trying to figure out like what's the best way to warm up the body what's the best way to pull all the muscles that we need in and kind of turn off the ones we don't need and what i have is i've got this 12 minute routine on youtube it's got like a million views or like a ton of people are using it what should they search for uh, your name and 12 then? minutes to perfect posture now that's the long have my daughter watch that too because there you slashes. go yeah it's great and it's it's an old workout it's got it's actually nowhere near as good as what we teach now in my certification i teach these really cool breathing patterns and what we call decompression and anchoring, but that's not what this is about. This is about basic hip hinging and how to strengthen the muscles involved with that. Basic human support. The 12 minute video is the longest one I have online. Most of them are like three, four, five minutes and very effective, but I want you to try the 12 minute because you all are law enforcement folks. You're active. You have to be able to move big. So I don't want to baby you. I want you to go learn how to move big, learn how to move your whole body as a unit. And that 12 minute video, you do it a couple times a week and you'll pull a few things out of it that you can use for a one, two, or three minute warm up. As you learn that stuff though, eventually I want you to go and learn our more basic things. You gotta, you gotta practice those little three and four minute ones too. Do you think, uh, talk about warming up, but is there, should we, you know, tw I work a 12 hour shift. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's usually somewhere between eight to 12 hours. Most mm -hmm. departments work some version of that. Um, should there be a cool down? I, I never really think about a cool down after work, but you take that vest off and it, you know, yeah, no, that's a great question. body temperature goes down 20 degrees and <sighs> yeah, that's a great question. And there should be, it's not necessarily a cool down. That's, that's almost like the wrong term. What it is, is it's a realignment. You realign yourself. Mm -hmm. There's these decompression exercises in particular that really, if you think of almost zipping the body up, getting it as tall and long as it can, as it's squeezing inward tightening up the muscles below the pelvis, lengthening the muscles above the pelvis. Really, really simple tools. There's a TED talk that I gave that teaches this really simple hand placement on the rib cage and on the pelvis that allows you almost like a measuring stick to feel when you're lifting the torso away from the pelvis, feel when you're really decompressing the body. It's a very good thing to learn. We can link to that too. Yeah, we I'm could sure. link to that really easy. I, we, that's just online. Um, I also want to talk, uh, you know, um, inflammation is kind of a big mm -hmm. topic right now. I mean, especially with like the gluten-free craze and all that, but, um, I've done paleo mm -hmm. and I try to be paleo. I should probably try harder, but I try, um, is, should we, I, I say we as the entire profession, I guess, but should we be really concerned about inflammation and things like mm -hmm. the back or is it more at a a cellular level that really is systemic through the whole body. Does that make sense? Yeah, it certainly makes sense. And it's both. Um, we need to be concerned about inflammation at the back. If you have a back injury, inflammation does not make you more prone to injury necessarily if in, in non-injured tissue. So if you're talking about like the low grade inflammation that people discuss, which is a really hard concept to understand, let's kind of, let's go into that for just a second. 
especially in the paleo community. They use this term, low-grade inflammation, all the time, and it's a very valuable term. What it's actually saying, though, is that your body is basically chemically charged. It's a little bit too intense in there at the moment. Cellularly, they are looking for more fluid. They want more fluid. They need almost like more nutrition to heal. When it's low-grade inflammation throughout the entire body, your digestive tract is usually where that's caused from. The digestive tract is this beautiful messenger that sends 90% of its images or of its messages up to the brain and receives like just a small amount, you know, 10% of the, of the messaging happens inward towards it. It's where most of the neurotransmitters are the biggies, you know, 90 plus percent of serotonin, 50 plus percent of dopamine are manufactured in the gut. Wow. Very, very important stuff. Like this is, this is like the, you hear about the second brain or different things like that. What we eat, especially processed food, has a huge impact on inflammation in our body if our body is impacted by it. Not everybody's is to the same degree. If you already have chronic pain, when you eat something that inflames you, it's going to go to that area. Your body has a programmed response to inflame and create inflammation in an area to help it heal. It's a chronic injury. Your body always thinks it has to heal. If you're eating bad food and your body's going into an inflammatory state, it's going to think that it has to heal your back. Hmm. It's crazy, but it's true. Yeah. And peel, you know, I'm not, I'm not paleo. I'm a human being and I eat <laughs> what I can when I can, as well as I can. Mm -hmm. Not perfect. The only thing I have ever stuck to on diet is I've been gluten-free for like four or five years now. And the only reason I'm still gluten-free is because I'm still gluten-free. Clearly. My body has said to me, you know what? This is good. We're going to stay away from the gluten stuff. I feel like I sleep a lot better and I feel like I've got less weight on me. Mm -hmm. Those are the big, big differences between what I've experienced gluten-free versus not. My mood changes aren't quite as heavy as they used to be either. That was a biggie for me trying to figure out like, why do I naturally go with this big up and down that I think a lot of more, maybe like more creative thinking folks go through you know mm -hmm. you're you got a lot of energy in your brain and it manifests as good and bad both things and the inflammation topic the gluten-free topic the digestive organs as a subject are so important and mm -hmm. under 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 understood misunderstood there's just not enough knowledge about what's going on in there but we're getting more probiotics be, are yeah. a biggie yeah could be a whole series of of well, conversations. I mean, you know, this is, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of stoicism in, in first responder communities from firefighters to cops, to military, to everything. There's stoicism in, in the medical community too. We all want to be better than we actually are. And we want to, we want to make sure everybody thinks we're better than we actually right. are and feel Absolutely. better, you know, mm -hmm. all of us. It's, it's, we all have an ego. That's part of this is to try and tear some of that down, yeah. at least in me. Yeah. And it's, it's important. Now there's huge findings just to bring this back to the gut stuff, all kinds of, you got, and I, I, I hope everybody will just Google for five, you know, five minutes gut flora f-l-o-r-a and its effects on depression anxiety mood sleep life existing is heavily impacted by the the ecosystem within the lining of your digestive tract not just the food you eat but the bacterium that absorb and communicate with the food that you eat the body is this crazy communications vessel from top to bottom more than we understand, more than, it, you know, sometimes it sounds almost like hippy-dippy, frou-frou stuff, but it's like, hey, no, this is how this crazy thing called the body works. And we go in and out of these trends, things like sugar-free or, or, you know, sugar, low carb to low fat to no gluten to who knows, who knows, none of us know. All we can do with movement or with health or with digestion or food is try give it long enough to see how it works for us. If you have major chronic pain and it's happening all the time, you got to first try to limit your diet away from typically inflammatory things, bad meats, meaning meat that has had a bad diet. It hasn't eaten like a cow or a chicken or a fish should eat. It's eaten like a farmed animal grains and different things like that. You have to make sure that your eggs are again from not vegetarian hens, because hens are not vegetarians. They eat little worms and things like that. Cage-free, taken care of hen-like hens. You got to make sure that you're not having too much sugar, especially not simple sugars. Don't go off sugar. Don't go crazy. Don't, don't flip like the pendulum all the way to the other end. 
find somewhere in the middle and start slowly but steadily developing better habits with your eating. If you feel like you're craving something, have that thing because the next time you crave it, you're going to crave it five times as bad and you're going to eat five times as much. Learn to become sensitive to what your body wants and then slowly and steadily, whether it's movement or diet, slowly, steadily give it what it wants. Adapt. Yeah, that's great advice. <laughs> Sometimes harder to, uh, to apply, but yeah. you know, I, I've again told this story here before, but uh, I did six weeks of strict paleo. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am strict. Um, it's probably the most disciplined I've been in, <laughs> since my, in my thirties anyway. Um, I'm sorry, but I lost, uh, I lost about 30 pounds. Oh, wow. And wow. just over that six weeks, yeah. that was kind of almost scary that my body was able to shed so most, much. Most of it's, especially when we're, we hold on to a lot of water when our body yeah. is kind of chronically in that. I don't know if inflamed is the right word. Maybe it is. Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not an internal medicine guy, but if our body is retaining, that's what that's what seems to happen more is like as a product of processed foods and not sleeping enough, maybe moving a little bit poorly or not enough. Our body retains water. It, it saturates itself. It gets a little more puffy. And I think a lot of that initial weight loss in something like a paleo where it's a, a legitimate, disciplined, not having that anymore type mm -hmm. diet, your body sheds. And a lot of it is water weight and some of it is, sure. is fat and, and all of that. But that's not uncommon. I've heard that a number of times. You know, I had a 30, 40 pound weight loss in a couple of months. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. Um, to finish out on inflammation real quick, uh, you know, there's a there's a kind of a discussion nowadays with ice or not ice mm -hmm. or, and that's a different kind of inflammation, I guess, in some sense of, you know, should, sh you know, is what's your opinion on it? Do you have opinion? Yeah, I have a huge opinion on it. All and, right. And go for it. <laughs> there's going to be a whole group of people that like, oh, this guy's a bozo. He's, he's wrong. And I might be, I don't know. But in my body, when I use ice or cold water, I feel better every single time. If I use it for too long, I don't freeze. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good. You know, I, I surf a lot. I love going into the ocean and here in California, the ocean's cold, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing to do after a workout, after like a long hike is just stand in my board shorts in the ocean, you know, chest deep for five minutes, 10 minutes, because it makes me feel better. It sucks for five, 10 minutes, but for like a week, my body feels great. You know, it calms down that heated, exhausted feeling in the body and mm -hmm. it feels better. So my opinion on ice is use it, but I don't know that ice is supposed to be compartmentalized. Like here, stick it on your shoulder, go, go into a cold bath, you know, take, take a plunge into the ocean or into a river or into a lake. That's cold enough that you're not going to die. You're I'm sorry, not too cold that you're going to die <laughs> cold enough that you're, you're going to survive. You're going survive. to be okay, but right. you're going to also, you're going to suffer for like a minute or two until your body gets used to it. And is that the whole body immersion to kick on that was it the parasympathetic nervous system? I don't to, yeah, again I, I, I trigger some of that or is it just you just notice the whole body I just system? notice the whole body responds well. I don't know why. I, I've I've seen the explanations, at least some of them. I've heard people I've had somebody I don't even think I was arguing, but they were certainly arguing about their point of ice being terrible for you. They had read this literature and that literature and I I don't know, man. I just disagree. I think if there's one thing I know about science, especially medical science, it's going to prove itself wrong in a couple of years, <laughs> yeah. you know? So why, why create any kind of like really heavy attachment to any idea? If something feels good for your body, use it. If it works for you, then yeah. it works. Exactly. What are you saying about the diet too? Just taking things out to yeah. see how it, how it affects and maybe sometimes reintroducing things a little yeah. bit, a little to see where your tolerance is. Exactly. You it's developing sensitivity. It's learning about ourselves. It's like, it's a very strange phenomenon, but when we go towards like 18, 19, 20 years old, we kind of stop learning about our bodies. Mm -hmm. We don't really put that much effort into understanding ourselves. And that's one of the most important things we'll ever learn in our life is how our own body works, what it likes and what it doesn't like. We got to take the time to start understanding that stuff. We, yeah, go. I'll even go a step further in my recent experiences uh, that doctors and even some physical therapists don't know much about the body. And that sounds weird, but I, I know my physician and many others, when you come in and say, my back hurts, mm -hmm. they go, here's your muscle relaxers, right? You go, I don't want muscle relaxers. I want a solution. They go, uh, go see a physical therapist. And then you go to see the physical therapist and they go... Uh, you need to work on your core. So we're going to put you through a core workout. Mm -hmm. You know, it was only recently, and we've talked about this a lot here about building a team and how we all need a team around us of 
kind of wellness professionals to um, help us thrive. And that's everybody, not just cops. But we that's all everybody. need someone as a, as a coach or, or uh, mm-hmm. someone to help us plan our, our fitness routine. We all need someone to look at our biomechanics and our movement patterns and help us see where we could be better. And um, it takes a long time to find the right people who have the right ideas in their head, like yourself, um, who think, no, 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 that's, that's not right. Yeah. Let's fix, instead of covering, instead of fixing the symptom, let's fix the problem. And that's going to take a lot of work on my part. It's going to take repetition. Yeah. It's going to take knowledge and repetition. There's a learning curve to getting healthy, no matter what. Um, something I say a lot is that ignorance has very little to do with the uneducated. It's the fault of the educated. We haven't spread the, edu- the information properly. It's not because people don't know. It's because we haven't told them. The job of any physician is to keep learning. Just keep learning. You don't. Well, what happens when you go to school is you learn how to learn. You learn enough about the body to understand the subtleties of how the body works, but you don't know a lot about the body when you graduate from medical, chiropractic, physical therapy, acupuncture. You just don't. You understand about a technique of accessing the body and utilizing the body and facilitating processes in the body. What we need to do as physicians, as therapists, as cops, as anybody, is once we're 25, 30, 35, 40 years old, we've got to keep learning. We got to make it our goal in life to learn more and more and more, not only about ourselves, but about everything around us. We have to be excited about the fact that there's this entire absurd body of knowledge that is just out there. There's an internet that can give us any form of information we're looking for. And what's crazy is it's all built on knowledge that is just coming out of the world. It's just coming. It's just Mm -hmm. like this free flow, absurd amount of knowledge. There's less and less and less excuses for not knowing in the world these days. And not all the information is out. And I don't know if there's ever that possibility of everybody, of anybody knowing everything. But there are a lot of people working extremely hard every day of their lives to make sure that guys like you and girls in the same field and people that take care of the world understand how to take care of themselves. It's very important. And I'm not the only one working towards that. There's a ton of us. And we do it because we love it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's uh, every now and then I got lucky, man. I got, I, I brought in a CEO a few years ago and he's building a business around this idea. We're not doing that. We're showing up and teaching every chance we get to, we're showing up and teaching. We need more doctors out there that really stand true to what the term doctor means, which is teacher. You don't need your surgeon to teach you about what he's doing. You don't need your your anesthesiologist to teach you about what they're doing, but you do need your primary care physician to help you understand your body better. And if your primary care physician doesn't understand their body very well, I want you to actively seek another one and tell your primary care physician, dude, you got to understand the body better. This, I don't want any more chemistry. I don't want this to be fixed by numbing and desensitizing my body further. I want you to help me get better long-term. And if you can't, I want you to point me in the direction of somebody that can we got to stop playing the game between patient and physician. Right now, it's codependent. It's unhealthy. Patients need to take better care of themselves. Physicians need to take better care of themselves so that they can better care for their patients. It's the only way it will work. It's fantastic. And uh, you mentioned it just now and uh, at the beginning, too, but you're traveling all over and doing these certifications. Uh, mm-hmm. For people who are interested, what's, what's that look like? What's that process? It's four. So the foundation training certs are four days. We actually have had a number of uh, officers and firefighters come through. I it's not for just doctors. That This is for human beings. This is for people that want to get better. Um, most of the people that come through here, I'd say over 80%, go on and teach this as a part of their career. Over 50% of the people are either doctors or physical therapists of some kind, You know, chiropractors, medical doctors, osteopaths, somebody in the treatment world. Another... 25 to 30% are like Pilates and yoga and Feldenkrais and Egoski method and different method instructors Mm -hmm. adding to their arsenal. Very complimentary to that. Yeah, very much so. And then about 20% of the people are anyone, any walk of life from dog groomers to firefighters to movie stars. They've all been through here and it's wonderful. It creates this environment of real common sense learning. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a little bit more specific than people are used to at times. There's a lot of cool anatomy knowledge and movement knowledge that happens, but by getting that differing group in the same room together, we all learn better. 
a lot. Like more, everybody does. Sure. More yeah. perspectives are never a bad yeah. thing. It's intense. It's four days, eight to nine hours a day, uh, Thursday through Sunday. And it, it's, everybody gets through it, but not necessarily easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I just watched about a half hour of the last bit of the day. And after eight hours of, of mm-hmm. these exercises, yeah, it's tough. You yeah. can tell people who are in very good shape uh, were, were taxed mm-hmm. in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, there's, there's no simplicity to it, like, other than just it's not that hard to do the poses. Once you learn the poses, though, you make it really hard on yourself. And if, you're, if you have an instructor instructing you, you're going to be shaking throughout, that, mm-hmm. throughout most of that exercise routine, throughout most of the workout. Yeah. I, in some ways, the, the, when it's, I've gone to some of the classes mm-hmm. for that uh, f- have been taught by people certified. Mm-hmm. And all. Um, it's kind of akin to the CrossFit model in the sense that, and only in the sense that um, it, gets, it never gets easier uh, because you just push yourself a little harder. You get better at it. And you get better at it. Yeah. And then that adds another element to it. Yeah. And then you're... The whole basis of foundation training is this accessing more and more muscles, more muscles for this movement. I want you to get more muscles for this movement. I want you to find more ways that your body can do this movement with more support, more power, more muscles involved. The better you get at that, the harder it gets. You got more muscles kind of counter up, like creating opposing forces for each other. We turn your body into its own resistance training system. You don't need external stuff. You don't need the artificial resistance. Not at the beginning, certainly. We want you to get strong in your own skin, with your own muscle chains, with your body literally learning how to just support itself in in space Mm -hmm. without hurting itself at the same time. Um, One other question I, I, well, I have a couple more, but um, vitamins or supplements, anything you recommend that people should be consistently either taking or cycling that will just in general for general health or things that might yeah. be specific to either back problems or muscle yeah. issues well, back problems the back problems the supplement is movement and hydration and rest those are the those that's the combination for back problems movement hydration rest supplement wise i don't take supplements uh my supplements are really healthy food when i can get it and a probiotic an almost daily, okay. probably four or five days a week, I take a probiotic. I think uh, I can't, if, if there's one thing everybody gets out of this in, this podcast, it's find out more information about the health of your gut. It's going to make your whole life better. All right. Okay. And then do some good movement to make your body better too. But probiotics are huge. Uh, if you're not getting enough sunlight, if you guys are indoors all the time and you're really not getting one hour, 30, at least like 30 to 40 minutes of sunlight relatively frequently. Yeah. Night on, shift. Yeah. yeah. And on more than your arms and your face, you know, on your body, get mm-hmm. out there, get a little bit of sun, not a ton. Don't burn, but get a little bit because that's vitamin D and a lot of other things that are mega important. Oh, what would you think would be a good dosage though? I mean, that, if you look at the back of it, it says something like 200 milligrams and like, that doesn't sound right. Uh, 200 milligrams is very light. And you got to realize the, the, the stuff we get, that vitamin D that we get in is called calmodulin. It's like, it, it's kind of converted by the body and the conversion is, it's not converting 200 milligrams of the calcium that you're taking to 200 milligrams of the calcium your body's utilizing. Calcium or vitamin D, sorry. Vitamin, uh, vitamin D. They're okay. very, very, vit- calcium kind of goes and becomes vitamin oh, D okay. through this, through this process. So if you're taking vitamin D, you're taking the building blocks for your body to produce its own. The sunlight as it enters the system actually creates those very similar building blocks to produce calcium in the body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or to utilize calcium in the body. Fantastic. I don't, but again, sorry, I I didn't answer the dosage question. Oh yeah. I was curious. I look at recommended dosages, read a couple, you got to do your own research. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't recommend supplements to very much anybody unless Mm -hmm. they're clearly not getting something. Right. So do your research. That information exists from a much more reliable source on it than I am. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do a guy, a a great person to look at for that type of stuff is a guy named Joe Mercola, M E R C O L A. His website is Mercola.com and it's the most utilized natural health website in the world. Hmm. This guy comes out with article after article after article of research cited papers and basically condensed advice that helps so many people, millions of people use this guy's work. I can't recommend it enough. Mercola.com. Spend a little time on there. Don't get caught up on that. He kind of uses some scare tactics with headlines and things to draw in attention. Read the articles, read the information, and it, it'll. there's wonderful stuff in there. And then uh, 
my last question before I let you go, I, I try to ask this of everybody, but do you have a, a morning routine or mm-hmm. even just a nighttime routine? I have both. What, what do they look like, if you don't mind sharing? They probably look a little different each time I do them. I don't have like a rigid routine, like a three minutes of this, two minutes of that. But every morning and every night, I stretch my body, no matter what. No matter where I am. I live in an RV most of the time. I got this big bus RV that my girlfriend and I travel around in, and we stretch in that thing all the time. You have to have that. You have to be able to just get up and for about five to ten minutes elongate your body because most of our life compresses us. So in the morning, I want to start strong. I do my biggest things are something called the windmill and gorilla lift exercises, which are more advanced foundation exercises. They're a little bit harder. But my God, what they do for your body when you've done them. They make you feel, they prime you for the day. You feel like this, like this beast when you're done with them. You didn't get bigger, but your body somehow like filled up its own space better. Your muscles are activated. Your hips are moving well. Your hamstrings are flexible. These exercises make you stronger while they stretch you. It's very, very important to have equal parts flexibility and strength. You don't want either one going off kilter. Mm-hmm. So any warm up or cool down, any morning routine, any evening routine, should stretch and strengthen your body more or less equally. It's definitely biased, but I want people doing foundation training. Mm -hmm. I've been looking my whole life for something to fix my back. And the only thing I found is the thing I put together because it filled up some pretty major holes that were lacking in rehabilitation and in exercise. Learn foundation training basics. Learn things like supine decompression and prone decompression. Once you learn those, create a very easy evening and morning routine for five to 10 minutes based on them. It's not hard to do, but I want people to think a little bit. You mm-hmm. got to like decide what you want, not sure. what I want. And for people who want to learn more, where can they find out about you and your website? Uh, and you mentioned YouTube and just yep. Googling, searching those, but what's what your website for yeah. everyone? Smartest thing is just to go to foundationtraining.com. That's our primary website. That's where we act. We all of the videos we have on YouTube. We also house on the website. They're free on there. We have a DVD that's like 60 bucks and teaches your body how to move, Mm -hmm. teaches you how to stay strong for a long time. I've got an older book that was out about four and a half years ago, and I'm actually, uh, I'm not, but uh, through HarperCollins, we're releasing a new book early next year that updates a lot and and actually brings a lot of philosophy into the whole idea of foundation training, kind of where it all comes from. Great. So that'll be a, that'll be a nice thing to have out as well. It's it's basically used to teach people how to apply these principles to everyday life, everyday movement, sitting in your car, you know, running after somebody. <laughs> I guess you guys do that stuff a lot. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe being run ran after. <laughs> Sometimes <Maybe> being <laughs> chased. <laughs> but it, it teaches you how to use your body better, regardless of what you're using it for. And that's the whole basis of our work. You got to take the time to learn how to work your body. And people who are interested in, in attending one of the certifications, they can find information yeah, there's there a, to, on the calendar. And yep. We have, I think, five or six more dates this year. We'll have probably seven or eight dates total next year. And about every month, month and a half, we're in a different location. A lot of them are in Santa Barbara. Some are in Boulder. Some are in different spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, so there is a, a little tab on the website that just says certification, and it's got all the information on there. And uh, Instagram or Twitter for anyone who wants to look at your photos and be jealous of you cruising <laughs> around the world. <laughs> Uh, what's, I don't even know what my Twitter handle is, but I do have a, uh, <laughs> I'll put it up there for you. The Instagram is, uh, just foundation training at foundation training. And yeah, we're every now and then we upload social media. We're not the best about that. We're, we're a budding oh, business. You know, we're trying to do as much as we can, but our focus is on the work. Sure. You know, excellent. Thank you so much for your time, Eric. Appreciate Lots it. This was a great, a uh, lot of good information. Good. So. I hope you guys use it. That's I never want to just put fluff out there for the hell of it. I really, you know, you guys use your bodies a lot. You really do. I know so many friends of mine that are firefighters and cops, and I want to see you all get better. So please try. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, a lot of good information there. Uh, again, all of that information is in the show notes. For uh, for this show and any other show, you can go to the squadroom.net for that information. Shoot us an email at squadroompodcast at gmail.com to let us know what you think, any comments, any questions, who you'd like to see on the show. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the squadroom and also on Instagram, same at the squadroom. Uh, if you like the show, you enjoy what you're hearing, please give us a review either on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever your uh, app of choice is. And uh, tell other people about it. We're trying to spread the word on it. So uh, this is episode eight. We uh, next uh, next one uh, next episode number nine 
is a discussion on uh, resiliency and adversity with Traver. And then episode 10 coming up, uh, we also have a great discussion with former Navy SEAL and uh, sleep specialist, Dr. Kirk Parsley. So a lot of good stuff coming up. We got some great CrossFitters booked uh, for the uh, upcoming episodes and some great stories from uh, motivational police officers. It's going to be a lot of good stuff. So stay with us and, uh, and, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll reap the benefits. All right. Take care of each other. Have a safe week. All right. Thank you.